And good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you coming on out. Day one of spring ball, as you would expect, right? Lots of energy out there. And, um, you know, the, the coaches, we have a few new coaches. They come from really good programs, so it was no surprise that they really, they were on point and picked up the pace very quickly as we uh, adapt to a couple different schemes. Um, certainly some players, you know, standing out a little bit more than others, but overall with day one in the books, the things that stand out is accountability, running around from, from point A to point B, finishing plays, uh, certainly energy overall, an attempt to improve culture uh, was evident. And um, I would say that execution overall for a day one was fairly decent. So that being said, lots to build on, lots of good film to watch. Big junior day today, so a lot going on here today in Coral Gables. Questions, please. You, you mentioned the attempt to improve culture. Can yes. you expand on that a little bit? You know, maybe what was the missing piece from last year you want to install this year? Well, I think the first thing is not ever going back to previous years. I think that's the most important thing. I also think it's understanding that, uh, like, we, we do we do things a certain way, right? No matter where we've been, no matter where we go, and that's at a really high level. Like accountability is a real thing as it relates to, you know, your individual periods, your team periods, finishing a rep, going to class, taking care of your body, putting the right stuff in your body, um, making sure that, hey, you know, football hurts a little bit. You got to finish, you know, bumps and bruises, shake it off, go on to the next play. Being tough and being resilient, um, having the accountability to come in here late and stay late and make sure you know your playbook so that you are going the right way and doing the right thing. Also, I think um, tremendous job by a lot of the older guys bringing in a bunch of new faces, 20 plus new guys that, again, when you when you come in mid-year, that's typically a pretty challenging situation. They've done a great job bringing them in, teaching them how we do things and getting them up to speed on the systems that we've implemented. So all in all, that's what I can, that's a good way to summarize that. Can you go in, into your new coaches on the staff and just what you want, what you liked about them in terms of bringing them to your organization? Going to all the new coaches. All right, Cam's giving me a bunch of sheets, you know? Well, I think when you, whenever, whenever you uh, make moves or you have moves on the coaching staff, it's always, uh, I've always thought about this way, always done it, it's always an opportunity to upgrade. It's what we've always done. And in this profession, I think it's uh, like, you know, you've got to do what you do, you have a job to do. I got a job to do over here as well. And sometimes you move coaches on because it doesn't fit, sometimes, you have an opportunity to get a better person in a situation and you create those situations. Sometimes the coach has a better opportunity from a family standpoint, a monetary standpoint. But either way, you're always positioned to have a depth chart to make sure you can make the moves and bring people in. And we hit on, on our top targets at the, the, the different positions that we were aiming for. Um, I think that it all starts where they're all elite human beings. That was at the top of the food chain in terms of uh, criteria. Uh, I think in terms of Coach Shannon Dawson, it's uh, what can you say? The guy's created some explosive offenses over the years. He's done it in the air. He's done it on the ground. He's been able to combine both the principles of, um, of getting downhill in the run game and some of the air raid pass principles, but some a great screen game and a great intermediate game. So um, I think Coach Lance Gidry, I and mean, we've all seen those edits and all those whatnot. I don't really get caught up in that stuff, but the fact that I have coached against him and seen the teams that he has coached, and they're different. You know, they come at you 100 miles per hour and they're physical and they finish plays and they play with a lot of energy and a lot of physicality. Uh, Coach Harris, he's a true professional. You know, a lot of people always mention Coach Ice and then, you know, Coach Harris, you know, their father and son, two elite coaches and human beings. And uh, I think it's important to say that, that Tim Jr. is here independently of any other accomplishments. And he's really worked his way into being a co-coordinator and whatnot and being a great coach um, with tremendous, uh, I would say, a, a tremendous reputation as developer of talent. Uh, Kevin Beard, you know, these are guys that I've been looking at and talked to a lot over the years. Um, Coach Beard is, besides being a great player, he was a guy that when he was here was always a guy getting guys together for extra meeting time, keeping them after practice to run extra routes, um, finding a way to make sure everybody's taking care of business in school and study hall. He's that kind of a guy. Uh, Jason Taylor we had here, we had identified him as another guy we thought was an elite member that we needed to keep on our staff, and we were able to do that with him. And then Coach Nicholson, man, he is another one. I mean, this guy, you want to talk about energy, detail, coaching acumen, he checks all the boxes and then some. So hard to fit all that information in one little shot here, but hopefully that's a good summary for you.
Corey, we, we always ask you about attendance because guys obviously have surgery and all kinds yes. of things in the offseason. I, I guess we should, can we go down the list of who, who, who will be here, who won't be? In no, we won't go down the list, but we do have a good chunk of guys that are going to miss. Some of them are probably going to participate halfway through spring in a limited capacity, and some guys will take the entire spring um, to mend, you know, to get back. So, And you know what? Credit to them. Some of those guys fought through stuff throughout the season. Some of those guys had lingering things before the season, and some of them just had you know things happen at some point in time or the other. But um, we feel very optimistic that everyone on the team will be ready for the season, for the season start. And in the meantime, you see, you guys don't get to watch it. When they're in here, our return to play specialist, Joe Girardi, does an unbelievable job training these guys. When they come back, they are ready to come back. And he's had a, he's, he's, he has a great track record and a great re a regimen to get these guys prepared. They're probably having a much harder day with Joe Girardi than they do at practice. Joe gets after him, um, and we expect those guys to be ready. Zion is uh, one of the guys we didn't see. Obviously, he was dealing with that injury. Is that yes. Just how, how is he doing in his recovery? He's doing well. He's on the mend. And right now, doctors prefer that he continue to heal up until we get to a point where we can really, really go. And so we're going to be patient with him. He feels good about it. The doctors feel good about it. So we'll stay the course. Right. So Mesidor will be ready maybe halfway through spring ball. He's doing very limited work right now with the team. Uh, his is more minor. Leonard isn't, uh, I want to say Leonard's is major, but Leonard will require all of spring to heal up. He'll be full go probably at the beginning of May. All right. Uh, now, in the meantime, from a strength and conditioning standpoint, both those guys and anybody else on that list, they have taken a pretty significant jump in terms of their overall body strength minus whatever they're healing up. So. One more time, I'm sorry. How would you assess the strength, of the specific strengths of the roster? Sure. Okay, well, I think uh, the part that really stands out, uh, we had a couple guys at the NFL Symposium today. Um, then the NFL has uh, the draft. They flap a couple high-level prospects. So JV on Cohen wasn't here today. But what really stands out, right, to say is, is the mass and athleticism and power in the offensive line, right? That really sticks out. Um, I think when, you know, Elijah Roy is going to heal up good. He's a big dude now. And when you watch the way Jaleel has grown and you watch um, Cam McCormick, you know, in his eighth year, you guys keep saying his 10th year. It's not his 10th year. It's his eighth year. Cam McCormick, uh, Riley Williams, Jackson Carver, Dom's a little bit banged up. This is a very big and talented physical group of tight ends, which is going to be really good for us. Our running backs, our signees aren't here yet, so we're status quo there, but Don Chaney is healthy, okay? Uh, the biggest uptick in just energy levels and enthusiasm has been the wide receivers, and it's due to, uh, you know, schematically we've adapted, we've changed, right? We've done some things to help us create more explosive plays, and uh, they see opportunity, and they've been very, uh, I would say, very diligent, very proactive in their approach to getting better and helping our offense. Defensive line-wise is where we have some more guys that are still on the men, so that part is not going to look to what it's going to look like in the fall. At linebacker, we have a couple of additions uh, and still a couple guys that are on their way back, so that'll look about the same. In the secondary, you have a couple guys back. So uh, we have a new punter in. He's really talented. Uh, he'll remind you a little bit of Lou, but he is his own man as well. And Andy is Andy, so that, uh, how's that? Good. What are your, what are Memorize your all that. was hard, man. <laughs> what are your impressions of Emory Williams so far? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a real one now. That guy is talented. He is sharp. He is, uh, sorry about that. He is sharp, he is uh, athletic, he's accurate, uh, he's a good leader. He could take it now because we get after our quarterbacks pretty good. He responds really well. And uh, he's also done a really good job taking to the tutelage of, of both uh, Jakari and, um, and uh, the rest of the quarterback room in general. You know, Tyler, Tyler has taken a tremendous step in terms of being a leader. So he's done a good job not only leading the quarterback room, he's done it with the offense, and he's done it with the team in general. Guy like Chikari, now he's really starting to step up as a leader with a position group and now spreading out to wide receivers. Emery and the rest of those freshmen have fallen right in line with those guys. Where do you think the players are in terms of like learning like Coach Dawson's new offense, learning mm -hmm. the defense, you know, all the turnovers? Sure. Like, where do you think they are with adjusting to that? Well, I think football is football. Sometimes it's called you know apples, sometimes oranges. So I think for day one, you're probably where you – feel you should be and let's call it what it is you're going to play you know your 12 opponents you better use your spring better than they use it 
to have a chance to be successful on, on game day. So uh, that's been very much a strong theme for our guys. They've done well. They've attacked it. And we've got to stay on it. You know, we've look, the best thing we could be is very real. And for Miami to make steps to keep getting better and work towards what we want to be, the stuff that we do is very hard. And when it doesn't go exactly well, you keep coming. And when it gets harder, you just keep coming, and eventually it'll pop. And we're, we're in that mode right now. So, so far, so good, and expect our guys to uh, attack it even more so in the coming week. You mentioned the different last question. Different components uh, Coach Dawson brings to an offense, but mm -hmm. obviously he does come from you know, the Hal Mummy air raid. Mm -hmm. Kind of a dumb question, but how different is this offense going to look this year? And just mm -hmm. have a guy with a different kind of perspective. How much do you mm -hmm. think? Just having that. Helps. Well, I think everyone is, has come to grips with the fact that you've got to be able to do both. But you've got to do both at a high level, right? Is it a significant change for us in the passing game? I would say it is. I would say it is. There's always some carryover. You know, just because some plays don't work doesn't mean they were the wrong plays. Sometimes there's carryover. There is a concept that's relative to it. But overall, you know, in the passing game, yeah, there's going to be significant differences. I think you see in the running game as well, you see a uh, – you see a coordinator that's very, um, how would you say it, collaborative in terms of the use of his offensive line coach, who's very experienced and has been in charge of some more prominent run games in the country, a, um, a running back coach that has done the same at his different stops as well. So you're looking at, at a coordinator that's had great success creating explosive plays. And when they had to throw it for 4,000 and rush for 1,800, they have. When they had to go perfectly balanced, they have as well. He brings that to the table. And um, obviously, we, uh, we're so focused on improving all the different aspects. We think that he improves us in all those facets and more. Hey, so. Mario, Jason Taylor, you, you, I know you, you mentioned him just now. Is, do you have a specific title for him yet? Or, you Defensive know, line. Defensive line coach? Defensive line. And then what does Joe? Defensive line. They're both defensive. Solid. We got a lot of coaches. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you, guys.